Okay. So, <clears throat> in today's video lecture, you're going to see probably not my head. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Okay, um, I had an accident uh, on Sunday and I tore my calf muscle. So I have to sit down when I give the lecture today. And um, <coughs> it seems like there's like all the international students are downstairs for like a, an event today. So that's why we don't have so many people here. But uh, I hope We'll uh, have a video that works this time, so they can look at that later. <laughs> um, let's see. So we're in the lecture, lectures, and we're on chapters seven and eight. The notes that were prepared for this lecture were like only about two pages. So I also incorporated some notes from another slide set to try to uh, explain it in, in more ways. But uh, so the reference to where those are from are on the first page here. Uh, but I'll just uh, start with the two pages that were already included and try to expand on, on those. Um, <coughs> First, we're going to be speaking about chapter seven and chapter eight. And chapter seven is about navigation systems. I don't have the, all the, the whole book with me today because it was more to carry, so I just took the chapter notes. And um, <coughs> um, basically, uh, this next two slides summarizes chapter seven. And we'll try to go into more detail on each of these as we go through the notes. Um, first of all, the <coughs> there are three basic types of navigation systems. There's global, local, and contextual. This is how these are classified or grouped. And there can be, these kinds of navigation systems can look a little bit differently. They don't have to look the same in every site. Uh, if you go to <coughs> a website like uh, Amazon, you see they have a global navigation bar at the top. And I think that their navigation, their global navigation bar looks pretty much the same as it did like uh, 10 years ago, because the one that they show in the book uh, seems to be pretty similar to the one that you see today on the website. So some of, sometimes there's some, s some standard ways of presenting things that don't really change so much in the last 10 years. And then there's um, a local navigation systems, and these are usually to help you move within a site and uh, maybe to get down more specifically into each uh, area. And sometimes, uh, um, usually the local navigation points within the site. And then you have contextual uh, navigation, and this might be embedded within the text or the context of the site. And um, then they, they, these are like hypertext links, for example, that can point to some place within the site or also to external links, which might be like advertisements, as you saw in that one that you pointed out. <coughs> um, in addition to the embedded navigation systems, there's supplemental uh, navigation systems. And these are to help you with the site, even though it's not like exactly what you're looking at at the time. There's also some ex extra aids that help you to get around. And the examples of these are site maps. And um, these, are <coughs> these are to reinforce the hierarchy of the site, so you get an idea of how the site works. So you, you want to be able to know where you are on the site and, and how you get to another part of the site. This kind of gives you an idea of the like of a map of the, you are here, and this is where you need to go. And then the indexes kind of um, ignore the hierarchy. And it's a way of looking at the 
uh, the website uh, so that you can um, just look for something that you s specifically want. If you know something by the name of it or a word or, some, or a phrase or something, you can look that up and hopefully find where it is within the site. So it, it doesn't count on you understanding how the site is structured. And <coughs> there's different things that you can uh, use for indexing. You can use a word, you can use several words, and you can have it point to a word within a paragraph and or within a, uh, another page. So it's, it's, there's something about when you set up the index, you have to uh, identify what type of granularity you want, how, uh, how, where does the word that you're looking at point to. <coughs> and how are indexes created? They can be created uh, manually, meaning that the, the organizer of the site can, can just come up with a list of words that should be in the index. Or they could be done automatically, meaning they have some kind of program that pulls out like the most common words out of the context of the site. And um, it might use uh, variations on the term. And variations on the term are what we call as controlled vocabulary. So a variation on the term would be like if you want to look up um, um, like um, uh, um, bicycles, and then you might look up uh, something like bicycle singular and bicycle plural, and so you have variations on how the word is spelled, or some kind of a street name, and you might, or something that's um, like somebody's name, there may be abbreviations of that. So you have something that is might be con close to the term, and you want to. Um, get something that allows you to still find it anyway. <coughs> and term rotation is when you have an index and you have uh, maybe a person's first name and a last name, and then you have them in the index with their first name first, and, and it's in alphabetical order, and then you have it in the in them in the index again with their last name first. So, And this can be also for other types of terms as well, not just names. So you might have uh, something that's represented in the index two different ways. And then guides are kind of um, <coughs> usually intended to give you more help on a certain topic. So maybe you're um, you're in a an e-business e site and you want to tell people how to uh, go through the the um, shopping uh, cart experience or what are the uh, what are the choices they have for. Um, um, like, all right, so you're buying a car and you have, they have certain options to choose from. Maybe you can tell them how they can go through and make uh, choices to picking out the options on the car. And the idea with the guides is that they're supposed to be informative so that people learn something about uh, how to get the information that they want, but at the same time they should also not be intrusive. So they can be something that people can choose to use or they can choose not to use it. And when they choose to use it, they may also just stop at any point and go back to the main site. So they're supplemental. They're in addition to the normal navigation system. <coughs> so that's uh, explained also on page 137. And then you have um, <coughs> the uh, browser navigation features. And these are something that you might find in the standard browser. Like there's a back key or a forward key. Um, then there's the history and bookmarks and favorites. And then there's a color scheme for <coughs> like the, the links that you visit and the links that you didn't visit. And these are pretty <coughs> standard features no matter what kind of browser you use. They seem to have these, these same characteristics. And a lot of times when people set up sites they also use the same types of features within their sites as, as well. So um, although they're, they're viewing the site through a browser, uh, they may also set up their links, for example, to use color coding as well. And then uh, the next part is on building uh, context. Um, so. Uh, your users should know where they are without 
walking through the complete uh, site. And let's see. So the idea is that you should be able to do a stress test. And um, we should go through the stress test a little bit later, I think. Um, let me look at the book. So the stress test is supposed to be on page 120. So the, the stress test is like, um, <coughs> uh, you should go to some place on a website that's not the top page of the website. And then when you send somebody to that page, uh, they should be able to identify like who's the owner of the site, um, even though they're in the middle of the site. And uh, what they would expect to see on the parent page, and what they would expect to see on the next link if you click on some contextual uh, link. So let me see if what this is. I'm not really sure. Okay, I don't know if they've changed their site, but they used to have. <coughs> This Arizona State University used to have a very messy site <laughs> and still makes you dizzy. <laughs> um, so uh, the idea is when you go to a website, you should be able to tell where you're at. And this is Arizona State. And then if I click on something um, like alumni, I should be able to tell where I'm going to. and. Um, I sh and this this is like happens to be the top page, I guess. So let's see if I go to academics, mm. degree programs. Okay, so if I came into this at this page, for example, not at the top page, I still know it's Arizona State. Um, these are these menu items are still here, but the one that I used to get to this page is not here anymore. So I would have to go see if I could find. Um, so, like I don't know, how, like I got to this page and I can't get back to the other page unless I use the back key, I think. Or maybe if I go here, I guess we to here. If I go here, research, mm. say like global development. So like this is kind of bad. Like why would they have like this menu here? Okay, so if I go, I'm here. If I go home, where do I get to? <laughs> Knowledge enterprise developer. But now I'm not on this uh, top page anymore. So I can, now I'm on the top page. So it's a, it's still a bit messy. Maybe this is not the best one to use as an example. Uh, we could try, okay, like this page, for example. <coughs> um, if I'm here, then I, I know well I'm at the college. And these are on the top. These are the global menu. And the global menu is still here. So it says, <coughs> for each random page, can you figure out where you are in relation to the rest of the site? What major sections are you in? Can I tell what major section I'm in? Yeah, because I'm here. See, I can see I'm already down to lecture materials. So this is good. Uh, what is the parent page? So the parent page of this 
page is uh, this page, lecture materials. So that's good. And then can you tell where the page will lead you next? Well, there's only these contextual links. If I had gone to, um, if I had gone back a level, yeah. Um, now I'm here. Let's see if I go to. Yeah. So I can see the menu. I can only go back to here. I can go because this is the same directory. Okay, so. So I can see where these these will where the page will lead me next, and I can see the parent page. So everything in terms of how this is set up is, is uh, seems to pass the stress test. But the other page that we looked at. Um, uh, this one, I'm not so sure that I could find the path about where how I got to where I am and how I, where I would be going if I went back or well, like how I would go back. I couldn't see how to go back and I couldn't see where I would be going if I clicked on something else. Well, <coughs> I couldn't see forward in the structure. So um, I think that uh, the Hemolda page is a little bit better in terms of the, the stress test. Just see. OK. Um, I just wanted to point out on page 116, we, we, that was on the previous page when we were talking about this. There's pictures of the various types of uh, navigation uh, systems. So they have global and local and contextual on the figure 7-1 and then um, this figure 7-2 is a supplemental navigation system, so examples of that. So it's just like a kind of a, a frame of how they look. Okay. So, um, <coughs> okay, I don't really, I'm not that familiar with what is uh, the, uh, the gopher sphere, but as I understand it, as they describe it in the book, it seems to be like in uh, figure 7, 5 on, the, on page 121, is that uh, it was a very hierarchical, strict hierarchical structure, and it was difficult. You couldn't go from one level of the <coughs> site to another level of the site in a different branch. So there was no links that allowed you to hop across. You had to kind of travel up and down the tree. <coughs> so <coughs> with systems today, the <coughs> the, by the use of contextual hyperlinks, within web pages, this allows more flexibility. So you're not stuck with a strict hierarchical structure. And they say that um, like when you do these, when you have searches with search engines, you kind of want to group things into homogeneous types. So when you search for something, you're not searching um, for apples and getting tomatoes in your apples. And then you, or you know, or you, you want to be able to have like certain zones that you can search within and make it more efficient in those search areas. But sometimes you want to have links between different areas. So <coughs> uh, the other time, the other day we did a search on a skateboard site and uh, there was different types of skateboards. There were cruisers, there were long boards, there was other types of boards. And if you found something within one category, you might want to be able to search in the other category as well. So sometimes it's useful to have links across categories. And they say that when you, <coughs> when you do this, you should um, uh, not clutter the context of the website with too many links. So you want to just keep, like, there can be links between different sections of the website, but you also want to make it so that um, 
not taking over the important space that's meant for content as well. And they show an example of hypertext websites can become quite complex. And that's uh, figure 7, 6 on page 121. So it shows that it can actually um, become confusing if you don't have its, um, if, you, if you do too much. <coughs> um, the embedded navigation systems, <coughs> they talk about global site-wide nav navigation systems. And a good example of this is the Google site. Just go back here. I mean, not Google, but uh, Amazon. Okay, so <coughs> um, they were pointing out the global navigation bars from Amazon in um, in in Figure Seven Seven. Also, they had some from from Dell and Apple as well. Um, it looks a bit different here than it used to. And um, it probably looks even more different if you log in. Mm. But it should be that it's uh, that the global navigation is present on every page. So let's see. Um, Mm. It's probably different when you log in. So I guess this is the global thing. Yeah. So this is what remains on every site, on every page. Hmm. OK. So this was done so long ago. They used to have different categories for different types of products. Mm. So they say that you should have, for global navigation bars, you should have user-centered design and testing. Or if you don't want to do that, you might also copy some of the other types of companies that have created global navigation bars. Um, and it says that it should be easy to identify the global navigation system from the main page of the website. Uh, local navigation systems are the ones that allow you to <coughs> dig deeper within the site. And sometimes the local navigation bars are expandable. So probably this is not the best site to look at. We can, I don't know if it's still like this. We can try the New York Times. So they have it. It kind of looks like almost like their newspaper layout. Um, That wasn't very global. So mm. 
Okay, so they have seem to do differently. They have their global navigation up in this corner here, which is uh, something that wasn't really implemented back in time when this was made. And then to be able to expand on that, this isn't even that. It's almost like they have it set up like a newspaper. Let me see if I can find another site. Um, we can try Microsoft, see what they've done. Okay, so they had it. Um, I think uh, this is quite confusing, actually. <laughs> um, can we think of another slide? So. Okay, so they seem to have a look one. And then um, I would say these are the the local the local navigation. So once you're under this, then you have like a selection of things to choose from. Okay, so <coughs> Um, the idea of the local navigation system is that it should allow you to see the different local navigation options and you should be able to um, expand on each of the options within that site. And then this is like a different type of uh, feature that allows you to like specify within each area and get dig down even, in even deeper. And then the contextual navigation system is for associative learning. It's allowing you to scan the page. And one of the points of this is that uh, these types of sites are set up so that if you want to search for something, you might search for something like um, fishing. And then when you get things that are related to fishing, uh, then you can also browse the web page. And when you browse the web page, you can dig uh, deeper and um, learn more about, see what's associated with phishing. And the, yes? Uh, on the eBay side, uh, it's told in the, in the book that uh, it's both topical and, and taught. Mm -hmm. What, uh, that, can that be compared to that? Um, but the task meaning like buying and selling? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. I think um, there may be something that's task related here. I'd have probably purchasing. So let me see. Um, maybe membership. Um, I'll say if I'm getting this one. So they don't have so much at the top level that is uh, task related, but like to add something to the card is task related. And that's more at the contextual level. So one of one of the things that you can do with these types of sites is that you can 
you search for something that you have some idea of what you're looking for and then you get a bunch of hits or re returns on your search and then this allows you to browse so you're integrating searching and browsing so you go from searching to browsing and then when you browse you might and say well then I want to look for uh, fishing boots and it allows me to to narrow my search so I can go from searching to browsing to searching or I might go back I, I thought I liked this better and then I can <coughs> kind of narrow the search in other ways too because they have uh, they have like these kinds of qualifiers so if I'm going by brand I can get everything that's under Columbia for example and they seem to have a task thing here that you can compare uh, items so if I compare these three items see what happens I get to see all the features and um, and how people rate them and the, the price of them so I get all I can look at them side by side so I'm actually learning about um, about the item so contextual navigation is intended for associative learning and that is if you find something that is um, uh, somehow related to something else it helps you to uh, refine your search and to be able to find what you think would be relevant for you. <coughs> it also says that um, people don't often uh, read everything so you shouldn't clutter the page with too much information that they t just kind of scan the page and you don't want it to be too many contextual links otherwise it becomes confusing so on this page uh, it seems like not everything is interactive okay so I don't want to confuse I, I do want to be able to compare this but basically it's taking me to the shirt in question or um, whether I w if I want to actually if I've decided to purchase it I can purchase it so these are like the two most important things I can look at the full description or I can purchase it or I can go back to the previous page or I can remove all the items from my cart. So it's giving me some choices in the context of the page, but it's not putting too much on the page. Um, yeah, so like for this same site, they give the example that there can be uh, embedded navigation which helps you to navigate to maybe related items or uh, more information this seems to be like a site map that is organized by category so if I want to see how the site is organized uh, I can look at this and say well uh, I want to find out about uh, fishing do they have anything about fishing in here? And I don't see anything immediately. Uh, then I look at camping and hiking. Yeah, maybe maybe it's hard to find it this way. Um, but uh, one thing is that uh, they have this is how their site is organized. And then if I can't find it this way, I might just like did before I use the search engine. Uh, they say that some tools may be built in uh, like hot links like if I if I put my um, icon if I put my pointer over something like this is shop wall then I see uh, the URL is listed at the bottom it says that it's for car racks so uh, or this is probably not the easiest page but sometimes if you if you hoover your your uh, pointer over something you can see the link of where it's going to go to as well so this is um, to increase people's 
uh, understanding of where they are on the web page. Okay, uh, so maybe we should go back to the lecture now. Okay, so these are basically the highlights from the chapter, and it, the chapter also talks about the different types of um, uh, guides, like the example of the Audi guide that shows you how to go through and purchase an Audi, uh, the site maps that can be organized by product area, like we just saw, and then site indexes uh, that are usually like just like flat. Uh, alphabetical uh, listings of, of, of important words that are identified as with the content of the site. <coughs> they say sometimes you can put um, uh, the number behind the index item to show like how many times the term shows up, but this could be something that's <coughs> not so informative, um, so it's really, it's not always necessary. Okay, there's more about guides. And then there's a, a difference between personalization and customization. Um, I think that was on the previous. <coughs> personalization is um, uh, when there's, it's a top-down design when they people providing the site try to collect information about the customers or the users of the site and figure out how to group things so that it's easier for people to find what they want. So it's when <coughs> uh, we guess what the user wants. Customization is like the flip side of that. It's when the user themselves decides how to group things and how to direct the control of the, of the site. Um. <coughs> They mention um, Amazon as a personalized recommendations. So another, uh, when you when you search for something on Amazon, you usually get a listing of um, um, preference, like similar types of book topics. Like if you're searching for a book on fishing, then the next time you come back to the Amazon site, they try to identify what you're interested in, and so then they list. Uh, uh, some things that well, a lot of books that are related to fishing and maybe you've already purchased the book from somewhere else so they don't <coughs> always get it right they don't always identify what you're actually looking for so um, the other thing with customization is when you decide how you want what you want to show up uh, there's an application called uh, flip chart which allows you to collect different things that you're interested in, and it shows you new items when they come up. And uh, that's okay if you, so you get to, do you get things fed to you that you actually are interested in and you want to see. The thing with customization is it doesn't broaden the search. So uh, if you're interested in something, you keep getting what you're interested in, but maybe you would be interested in something else and you don't know that you're interested in something else because you're not seeing it. So customization has a way of uh, narrowing the search instead of broadening the search. And sometimes, in some cases, you can miss out on, on other items. Uh, besides um, planning the search, they also talk about the use of uh, tag clouds uh, for collaborative filtering and different types of um, social networking tools like uh, Flickr or some other type of uh, um, social site will have these tag clouds on the side that show how popular certain terms are. And then when the term is more popular than the size of the term or the, the font of the term, term is bigger as opposed to the less popular terms. 
And uh, this is kind of an emer emergent filtering because like I might be interested in this because this is of, uh, of interest to a lot of other people. So um, that's also used uh, with some uh, bottom-up approaches to uh, being able to search for, for information. Okay. So uh, these um, notes now for chapter seven uh, also uh, kind of support the content of the chapter, but in a, in a slightly different way. So they're talking about the navigation system is meant to be something that the people, the user looks through it's because there can be a lot of information uh, down there and then you want to see what's relevant. So this helps you to view what is relevant. And there's different types of uh, uh, way of moving through the content of a site. You can go from, like your search can be big and then you can narrow it and the, or you can be have a certain um, ideas or a search and you might want to broaden it. And then you might want to shift from one <coughs> subject to another subject. You might want to jump uh, so there's no overlapping between the subjects. So these are just conceptually how you can view the different types of moves through content of a, of a website. So navigation patterns are moving up a level or moving down, moving to a sister branch on a hierarchy, uh, moving in natural sequences. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of ways to, to search for things. So it's breaking down the navigation system again, global, show everywhere, tell the users what's important. Locals show the specific part of the site, tell them what's nearby. Contextuals show only the specific situation and tell the users what's related. Um, and uh, you should be able to, um, first you start out with a, like in any map, a site map, you would have like you are here. To, to, to give you an idea where you're starting from. And then you want to be able to remind people where they came from and also to be able to show people uh, where, they, what it, where they would be going, give them an indication of where they would be going. Uh, so not everybody starts at the front page and not everybody uses the back uh, button, the back, uh, backwards key. So you should be able to s be able to know where you are within a site and how to f to get someplace else from that that page. Um, I think this is an unfortunate uh, um, acronym because uh, if you have all of these things, it's actually a good thing. Uh, so you have contrast. So you make sure there's a difference between different things. Uh, bring out what is. Uh, uh, what is dominant or, and what is less important. Uh, you have uh, repetition. Repeat the design throughout the interface, meaning that this global navigation bar should be the same across the, the whole site. It shouldn't look different in different places and be located in different places on the site, like when in that uh, Arizona State site, the, the global navigation bar was actually in different places. Uh, alignment, visually uh, connect elements, create a flow, uh, convey the organization. So it should be not confusing as to how things are, are visually laid out. Uh, it should be some consistency. Uh, proximity, make effective use of the spacing to group related elements and to separate unrelated elements. So we, sh we looked at the Molda website <coughs> and there was some problems with grouping of elements. There was a mixture of uh, uh, task and topic and all kinds of things within the local menu. The global menu was fine, but there was like a global menu, a local menu that was a big mess. So it, it would be better to separate elements into certain uh, types and to keep them in 
consistent areas so that people know where to look for them. OK, so these are just examples of these. And these are the, the various uh, page layouts. You can see that you don't always have to have everything in the same place. So sometimes your, your global navigation might be, well, usually it's at the top, but it could be someplace else. But a lot of people switch between this local navigation. And we saw on this New York Times website that it was actually up in a little corner, which was, uh, uh, I guess, maybe made for people with mobile devices. Yeah, this is New York Times um, that we looked at. They have navigation global, but I, I found that this was <laughs> when we was when we was clicking on this, I wasn't getting the same navigation bar throughout. So they must have changed something. This is eBay. They have a global navigation, banner ads, navigation search, local navigation, and research results. In some places, like um, um, business sites, they use a lot of space for navigation to help you find what you're looking for, and maybe a small space for the research results. But when you get to the main some result that you're looking for, then it takes up more of the page. This is Amazon, global, contextual navigation, contextual and search results. So not everybody has the same layout. Okay. Okay, so we'll take a break now and then when you come back we'll do chapter eight.